So I'm Chris Meyer, I'm from the IZ department. I've been here for about uh, four plus years and I'm fascinated by biodiversity. You know, I've always been, always will be. So I consider myself extremely fortunate to be living uh, at one of the most significant times, I think, uh, to be in the history of biodiversity science. Uh, innovations in both information technology and genomics are certainly gonna provide these unprecedented opportunities for us to transform our understanding of the natural world. So, you know, let's face it, uh, if we aren't already, we will be certainly in uh, living in a genomics-enabled world. Um, the cost of sequencing is plummeting, uh, even outstripping the pace of Moore's law. And as we know, biodiversity can be digitized. So because of descent with modification, all living creatures share a similar yet slightly different genetic code. Uh, that blueprint can be decoded, and portions of it can, be, can provide a digital signature for species. Uh, the fact that all organisms carry around this name with them uh, falls under this rubric of uh, the DNA barcoding initiative, which you might have heard about. So after I finished my PhD and a, a postdoc and done a bunch of sequencing and phylogeography, et cetera, on a bunch of groups of marine invertebrates, a bunch of us sat around thinking about how, trying to think big. What, what's, the ne what, what's the next big thing? So we converged on this ambitious project to, to try to sequence an entire ecosystem. And we kind of said, why not? And we were really lucky that the Moore Foundation uh, went for such a venture. So thus the birth of the Morea Biocode project, which uh, I, I'm the director of. It's a multinational, multi-institutional effort to digitally characterize uh, entire macrobiota from this tropical island in French Polynesia. So for the last five years, more than 300 scientists uh, from over 50 institutions globally have been climbing up peaks, diving down into the reefs, uh, basically in an effort to collect every possible species. Uh, you know, essentially we're conducting a door-to-door -door scavenger hunt, capturing a representative individual for a voucher, extracting its DNA, and sequencing its barcode. So at uh, last count for our last annual report, we had over 8,000 species collected from about 7,000 collecting events from all over the island, uh, distributed amongst the major taxonomic groups, as you can see here. We divided it up into kind of these major functional groups. So it's, it's kind of basically through this, this traditional, you know, almost Victorian-esque uh, voucher-based all tax on inventory, uh, we've been building a digital license plate registry, right? So, um, for all the species in this ecosystem. So in essence, we've been calibrating, uh, we've been providing a means to calibrate uh, some instruments. So now we can read biodiversity like we might read temperature. So I wanna concentrate on two focal studies uh, now on this, um, where we try to take advantage of this phone book uh, or registry that I find kind of exciting and, and uh, recent. So I'm gonna introduce the concept of these toll booths um, you know, no longer do we have to go door to door to do these censuses. Uh, we can, you know, deploy meters at places and, and track the drivers as they pass through. Uh, we can standardize collection methods and use bulk processing uh, to, um, to, to get a record of the, of the diversity. So we can use these devices to monitor change, to detect invasive species, to determine loss or directional declines or increases. So here I'm gonna highlight these arms, these autonomous reef monitoring structures, which are basically kind of glorified uh, PVC apartment buildings that we put down on the reef for one year, and we go and take a milk crate with a 100 micron mesh on top of it, we bring it back up to the surface, and we basically deconstruct it and document every single living creature in, in that community. And we split it into three fractions, actually four, there's a big fraction that generally we can do standard barcoding on. We have a two mil, 500, and we scrape the Cecil fraction af af after photo documenting it so we can have a, uh, we can do some sort of landscape or coverage analysis with it. So we basically blender those fractions up. And this, this slide is a, a pretty amazing um, piece of work by two students. It took about three years and a lot of tinkering, a lot of art actually went into it, Matt Loray and Ryuchi Machida. But basically it shows, uh, it's, it's very exciting to see it. it. The exciting parts are that it represents the diversity across all animal groups, and also that the, the homogenized fractions are essentially um, comparable. So the blues are all from the same sample, and that's the scraped homogenate fraction. Um, somewhat mind-boggling is that um, each of the arms contains between 1,500 and 2,000 species. Okay, over 50% of those uh, we don't have in our phone book. So, you know, who are these unregistered drivers? You know, what are they doing? Um, uh, how important are these dark taxa to ecosystem functioning and services? And that's what we're trying to figure out now. We can certainly, we kind of know which functional groups they're from, and in some cases it's not surprising that we're missing them. So you can imagine other standardized ways you can come up to deploying these devices, uh, setting up toll booths across habitats and domains. And that's really the creative and fun challenge moving forward right now. So the second um, 
example of utilizing these digital tags that I want to bring up focuses on systems analyses. Uh, this is a collage we worked with uh, David Lischwager and National Geographic on a one cubic foot story. Um, basically, every one of these individuals either lived in or passed through a cubic foot of reef over a 24-hour period of time. So from that list, we can create a species-level food web that then uh, modelers basically collapse down to a trophic web by um, assuming, uh, they can collapse those nodes by assuming functional redundancy. If they have the identical interactions, they're collapsed down. So 363 goes to 61. Using these digital tags, we can test those assumptions uh, of redundancy by analyzing the gut contents, right? So we can see who eats whom and if it's really true that there's a lot of redundancy. So if we look at this image right here, Here's the, it combines the gut content analyses from three different fish species. The two hawkfish species up on the upper left would have been combined, would have been uh, truncated, or would have been collapsed as functionally redundant. But as you can see, they really only share two uh, prey items. And so I think uh, the implications of this and the take home could be that trophic web people, that the people have been constructing are probably much more partitioned than we assumed and perhaps the estimates in modeling redundancy and thus resilience may have to be adjusted. So to wrap up, research for the past five years has been concentrated on one particular model ecosystem. We've been decoding this ecom, identifying and digitizing the players to better understand processes, and they'll allow us to build, test biodiversity barometers. Do I have one last slide is uh, <laughs> imagine a global network of that, um, where diversity information is heavily contextualized. Um, so we monitor for change, project trajectories, um, and uh, model responses to make more informed decisions. And we've proposed that. It was in Nature last month. And I think the Smithsonian has a significant opportunity to play a leadership role in that. So thank you. Quickly. Yeah. Mike. How close have you gotten to an asymptote on your accumulation curve? Uh, with the 454, with the next gen? Um, or just, just an effort? Just in general. Right? Oh, sorry. How close are we to asymptote curves for, for any of the diversity? Uh, standardizing effort has been an interesting uh, question, we usually use uh, events as broadly standardized average out. For certain groups, we absolutely have. So for shallow water reef species, yes. For decapods, we're getting there. For other things, uh, annelids in particular, uh, some of the other small crustacean groups, uh, gastropods or mollusks, we're, we're, we've got a long way to go. So, And it's not surprising. Again, we know we're only batting 500, you know. It's, but that's, that's kind of the fun of this. And we're only in charge of the macrobiotics, so the next gen's picking up all the small stuff, which is great.